You then, as a bodhisattva, for I claim you as such today, have two aims, the welfare of all sentient beings and the achievement of Buddhahood. The goal is the welfare of all beings, their liberation from suffering, birth, and death. And the means for the achievement of that goal is the bodhisattva's attainment of Buddhahood. So you might say that the attainment of Buddhahood is a selfish goal. That is, it is concerned with the establishing of true selflessness where we are. It is something we must do or we cannot save sentient life. This is the Alpha and the Omega of being. The Alpha or the flame of spirit that descends is that power of God that makes you one with God, the vessel of God, truly the chalice of his light. That is what you want to be because you want to take that chalice of yourself as Jesus did when he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat, this is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant. He said that of the wine. The, the blood and the body of Jesus Christ represent the alpha, the omega, the spirit, the matter of his being. We want to be able to give the substance of ourself for the saving of life. This is the only true and real gift, and we can only do it when we are truly whole within ourselves. A bodhisattva will be endowed with inconceivable wisdom, compassion, and power, and knowledge of limitless methods for freeing beings from suffering. Scholar Har Dayal writes, the Bodhisattva ideal reminds us of the active altruism of the Franciscan friars in the 13th century AD, as contrasted with the secluded and contemplative religious life of the Christian monks of that period. The monk prayed in solitude, the friar went about doing good. In Buddhism, both the arhat, a Buddhist adept or saint, and the Bodhisattva were unworldly idealists. But the arhat exhibited his idealism by devoting himself to meditation and self-culture, while the bodhisattva actively rendered service to other living beings. We must take care to distinguish in this teaching human acts of goodness, of human goodness, and human caring for others, which, as we know, has its limitations, and acts of divine goodness whereby in the action itself there is a transfer of light from our chakras so that we bring not only human comfort but surcease from the anguish of the soul, a true healing of the inner person. Today, above all in our age, as we enter the final decade of our millennium, it is absolutely essential that the gift surpass and transcend the mere human offering. We must have more to give to cure the ills of society. And the Divine Mother's presence over us and the presence of Maitreya gives us that wherewithal. Just remember, if all you have to give is your human self, it is going to be wanting, wanting the full measure. That is why the fire in our hearts must be so intense to pull down the fire of God so that when one comes to us in profound trouble, that we can give that fire and that fire can go forth to heal what may have been the buildup of many lifetimes of a karmic situation. The Buddhist philosopher and sage Nagarjuna wrote around the second century he said, the essential nature of all bodhisattvas is a great, loving heart. Remember the word great. A human loving heart is not enough, but a great loving heart that is the heart of God. This is what we must have as a reservoir. And all sentient beings constitute the object of its love. And that is truth. We who are on the path must feel the love of God pouring and descending through the I Am Presence over the crystal cord into the heart, intensifying and intensifying and intensifying in the heart so that when we give, that gift and that portion is felt. This means conserving the life force and the sacred fire. 
it means having something with you always. That's something which Jesus called the cup of cold water. The cup of cold water in Christ's name. All bodhisattvas, in order to emancipate sentient beings from misery, are inspired with great spiritual energy. That great spiritual energy comes from the deep desire which becomes the single desire of our life to assist others to make it out of the realms of darkness into the realm of light. I can truly tell you when you resolve all lesser desires and inordinate desires, which is the way of the Buddha, and you truly desire this light and fire and to give it, you will have it. But you will always be tested to see whether something else will come along that you want more. This is truly the foundation of the first commandment, thou shalt have no other God before me, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. That God and that desire of that God is what we are all about. We must have that single-minded purpose, and we will become bodhisattvas. We will become the incarnation of the mother. We will become one with Maitreya.